Hey everybody, it's Stone Creek Church to Pastor Ricky and the whole team there. I want to send you some love all the way from Ireland. It's Pastor Brian here. I'm the executive leader of Christian Churches Ireland. That's the Assemblies of God here in this part of the world. And we are so thrilled to be in this relationship to build the kingdom of God together with you there in Urbana, Illinois in Stone Creek Church. Hey, I want to thank you from the bottom of our heart on behalf of our national leader and our leadership team for your generous, and I mean generous, gift. Let me tell you what you have enabled to happen here in Ireland. With your generosity, we've been able to launch a brand new learning hub for ministers and leaders in Northern Ireland. Also, because of your generosity, we are now in talks with a software company trying now to develop a brand new online e-platform for all of our future training endeavors, which means that no matter what part of the world you're in, no matter what part of the Ireland you are in, all our learning and credentialed learning for our ministers, church leaders and ministry leaders will now be accessible online at any time. And I want you to know at Stone Creek Church, you have made that possible. Without you, that would not have happened. Also, your generosity this year is enabling us to help pastors plant six churches in the island of Ireland. Those seeds are now planted and we hope to launch those churches at some time in 2021. But the process has now begun because of your generosity. So let me remind you, you are helping to raise and train leaders. You are helping to credential ministers. And everyone there at Stone Creek Church right now, you are helping to plant churches to make Jesus even more famous in this beautiful part of the world. And you know what? We are so grateful to Pastor Ricky. We're so grateful to every single one of you uh, for, for affording us the opportunity to partner with us here in Ireland. Now, there's a rumor that if when this COVID season ends, that I might be able to jump on a plane and be with you at some point in 2021. And you know what? I'm definitely going to try and make that happen because I want to say a huge thank you for what you have done in person. It is no small thing. So I just want to say bless you. Thank you again so much for all that you're doing with CCI, all that you're doing in Ireland, but more importantly too, what you're doing in your local community. I want to encourage you, keep building the kingdom of God. Keep making Jesus the greatest headline there has ever been and there ever will be. Because here's what we all share and what we all believe, that Jesus Christ through the local church really is the hope of your world. And so, thank you so much. It just blows my mind to think that there are people in Urbana, Illinois, that share the same heart I do for here at the churches in Ireland. That is an incredible thought made possible by the, by, by the cross uh, through Jesus' name. So, Pastor Ricky, the, the board, the leadership team, the teams, the staff, and all the incredible members at Stone Creek Church, again, a huge thank you. And may the Lord bless you for what you have sown into this nation. I hope to see you soon. Every blessing. Bye-bye. Hey, Stone Creek Church, Ricky Spindler here, and I am just excited to be joining you today. And also just want to welcome those who are just joining us for the first time. It truly is a privilege to have you uh, with us today, and you're welcome here. Uh, I love that video that we just saw. I, I love it for a lot of reasons because it speaks to not only our local footprint, but our global footprint as well. We have these things that we call global partners that we partner with around the world <clears throat> to do God's kingdom work. And I just it was a, a kind of overwhelmed with this thought. Here we are in central Illinois, and, 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 and we are uh, gathering together in various different ways. And while we're here, because of our generosity, God's doing work somewhere else in Ireland. And that's just the crazy to fathom to think about. And I, I believe it's true when we say that Stone Creek Church is more than just a Sunday morning experience. It's not just an event. It's Stone Creek Church is a movement. And <clears throat> it's just a beautiful thing that God is doing. And uh, let me just say uh, to, I don't know if you remember this, but this is our, our Kingdom Builders uh, booklet that we handed out the week before the pandemic started. I know some of you uh, talk about that. And uh, Kingdom Builders is our, you could say it, it's our, the umbrella for our generosity campaign here at Stone Creek Church. 
It is um, above our tithes, above our offerings. We, we um, set aside our income to, to, to make kingdom impact. We, we do so uh, in a lot of different ways with local and global partners. We do so with global projects. We do so with um, uh, uh, local mi uh, church ministry expansion. And we also invest in um, the next generation leaders. So it really is a, a comprehensive uh, umbrella that we he have here called Kingdom Builders. And it's how uh, God takes the gospel through Stone Creek Church and multiplies it around the world, his message. And one of the things that we like to say is this, the, gospel's, the gospel is free, but ministry isn't. I wish it was free, but it's not. It costs money to buy things, to rent spaces, to build things in order to facilitate the vision uh, that we have around the world. And so I just want to say thank you. Uh, many of the projects in here we have in the midst of a pandemic completed. Many of the initiatives, uh, investments that we wanted to make in different partners locally and globally uh, have been uh, completed. And if you have been with us for a while, you know, one of the things that we talked about doing a couple years from now was we were going to remodel our sanctuary and we were going to level the floor because we needed more space for people to come on Sundays. And we needed a room that was versatile in order in order to um, serve our community in a great way. We just needed more space under roof to invite the community in and to serve the community with a lot of different initiatives. And we thought that'd be a couple years away. But the reality is we were speaking with elders and staff and we just thought, man, maybe, maybe the time is now. Maybe uh, when we can't come back in a great way anyway, rather than waiting and it being a larger disruption at another time and having to disperse everybody, why don't we do it now? And so we began to meet with contractors and builders and different people and get all of the plans and everything ready. And it looks like it's going to move forward. We've had some leading gifts already come in. We have many of you who are already starting. Our, our one day offering this year is not only going to go to help uh, uh, to, 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 um, to meet the needs just locally and globally, but it's also going to help with our building remodel. And so in many ways, not just for what God wants to do in the present, but for what for God wants to do through us in the future, this needs to be probably the biggest one day offering we've ever had. And I'm just excited already to see um, the generosity that's already coming in. And I know when we receive the offering um, on November the 22nd, I'm just excited to see what God's going to do. It's just an indicator that God has big plans for Stone Creek in the midst of a very difficult season. And I don't know about you, but that's just the way that God usually works. He does great things in the midst of difficulty. We're blessed to be a blessing. If you'd like to give today your one day offering, you'd like to give your regular tithes and offerings every week. We say this, we don't manipulate, but we do believe in biblical generosity. We do believe that God speaks to us about how we steward our resources. On the screen here, you're going to see some simple and easy ways to give. Whichever one works for you, feel free uh, to utilize. Uh, they're all safe and easy ways to give. And I just want to say thank you ahead of time for your continued faithfulness and uh, generosity. If you have your Bibles, join me in 1 Chronicles chapter 4 or your devices. Go ahead and turn there as we get ready to study uh, the scriptures together. You know, one of the things that I try to do every year is I try to get a repeatable prayer, a prayer that I can pray over and over again uh, when I'm just out working in the yard or going about my day or when I just have a few moments and when I'm waiting and, and somebody's late to a meeting, just something that is like a fixed point for me that I can begin to pray over my family, myself, over you as a church. And so this prayer that I, I'm, I'm going to read uh, to you today is found in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10 where the scriptures take a detour. The chroniclers, uh, the first and second chronicles, the writers, the chroniclers, when uh, they wrote that, it is a genealogy. They're coming out of exile. They're coming back into the promised land. So they're writing everybody's names, who's coming back in, really to make sure everybody gets uh, what is supposed to be theirs. It's kind of boring reading, if I'm being honest. I can say that I'm a pastor. Some of those scriptures are boring to read. Come on. Some of them I just doze all the way through. And I'll be honest, uh, shameless confession, I probably skipped a few of those sections. Uh, just saying. But when we're reading along 
chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, we get to chapter four, and then the, we're in genealogy, and then boop, we get two verses, and we're introduced to a character out of nowhere, we're told a little bit about him in verse nine, and we're told a prayer that he prays in verse 10, and God's response to that prayer. It's just two verses. I call this message the tale of two verses. The tale of two verses. Because we're introduced to the individual called Jabez, and the Bible gives us some details about his life. Now, anytime the scriptures take a detour and give us details about someone's life, I think that's worth a closer look. As we begin to look underneath the magnifying glass of time here, and I think there's some things that we can learn from his life, and I think that will apply to us. And ultimately, I want this to be a prayer that we pray over our lives and over our church as we end the year strong for the next 40, 40 days, roughly about 40 days from now to the end of the year, maybe just a little more. But here's the reality. Let's just pray this prayer over our lives and see what God will do. Let's read it in verse 9. It says this, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I have given birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from some from harm so that I will be free from pain. I like what one translation says this, keep me from harm and keep me from causing others future harm. I just like that uh, added variation. What I want to do is I want to focus on verse nine because I think there are, even though it's very small, it's just one verse, I think there's some things that jump out to us when we read this narrative. And the first one is this, there is no mention of a grandfather and a father. Now that may not seem like a whole lot, but up until this point, the writer of Chronicles has, has grandfather, father, son, grandfather, father, son. It's just, just going through and listing all the names. But because they are not included makes us think that there was a reason for their exclusion. Most, most probably it was that they did something that was dishonorable. So much so that their names were omitted when the, in the genealogies. Could this be what she is referring to, the mom saying that my son was born in pain? So that's the first one, first thing that I see. Second thing that jumps off to me is that uh, we're told hardly nothing about the brothers. Only they are compared and contrasted to Jabez. The fact that they say that Jabez was honorable means that they were probably dishonorable. Maybe, just maybe, whatever the father and the grandfather got caught up in, maybe his brothers got caught up in. So not only do you have generational pain, grandfather and father, maybe you had family pain with the brothers. And then the other thing that jumps out to me is just the name Jabez. I mean, talk about a name. Jabez literally means one word, pain. How would you like that? Hey, Jabez, come here. Pain. Every time someone used his name or he said his name, it gave credence to the fact that he was living a painful existence. Jabez had a life that was filled uh, with pain. And you know what I know? And not literally, but figuratively, we've all been Jabez's at times. We may have a lot of people right now who are in pain-filled situations. And though your name literally probably isn't Jabez, figuratively, it probably is. Can I get a layman on the chat right there? We are living in a time. I mean, I was, in a lot of the conversations I have, I and mean, this is not normal. I, when people ask how they're doing, it, I get the list. Here's all the things <laughs> that are going on. It's not just one thing, it's a convergence of many things. And I think now, there is the, uh, many of us are, uh, because of prolonged exposure to discouragement, not something meaningful and hopeful to look forward to at times. It's, it, it just can seem like we're in a season of pain. And everywhere we're looking sometimes, it seems like I've lost this, I've lost this, I've lost this. It's so easy for us to identify with Jabez in, uh, in, in this moment. But the scriptures say this about him, that he was honorable. Now, when I read that, there are very few people in the scriptures, the Bible says they're honorable. And so when I read that, I got to really 
what, what sets him apart? Why is he more honorable than those that are around him? And I just began to think about this. What sets him apart is verse 10. What sets him apart is one word, prayer. This is no ordinary prayer. In fact, this, it is a, there, there's no wasted words here. It gets straight to the point. But it is a, a, a powerful prayer that's broken up into four sections. One prayer with four different prayer invitations. He says, would you bless me indeed? Would you enlarge my territory? Number two. Number three, would you let your hand be with me? That's number three. And number four, keep me from harm and causing others future harm. So let's just talk about this. Let me break this prayer down real quick. I'm not going to take too long. But he says, bless me indeed. Now, it's one thing to pray, bless me. It's a whole nother thing to say, bless me indeed. When he adds that, that means this is no ordinary request for the blessings of God. He is praying a passion filled prayer. This is a, a desperate prayer. This is a prayer for uh, the supernatural favor of God to be injected into every area of his life. He's inviting God to be all up in his business, to affect all the scenarios of his life and ultimately to reverse any situation that he finds himself in. He says, Lord, bless me indeed. Put that in modern day vernacular. Let me help some people out today. You better bless me, Lord. Lord, show enough. Ooh, come on, bless me, show enough. Mm -hmm. That's right. Some of you get that. Some of you don't. Don't worry about it. But I like it that it's open ended. I like it that it's not so specific because he's asking the Lord to bless him. He's asking for his favor to show up, his mercy to show up in every area of his life. God, I don't care what it looks like. I know I need it. Would you just bless me? Would you bless me indeed? I think. I can't prove this, but I think there's an element of surprise me, Lord, in this. God, would you, I know I need it. I don't know everything that I need to ask for, but God, would you surprise me by what you do? Would you bless me indeed? How many know I probably need to be praying that over my life and over situations? Bless me indeed, Lord. Second one is more revealing because he said, Lord, would you enlarge my territory? Now, when you see territory here, I think... It, one is obvious and one is more subtle because you can look at it two ways. You can look at it as expansion and you can look at it as recovery. Well, let's break both of these down. He says, Lord, would you enlarge my territory? And the word I would use here is the word more. He's asking him to do more. If you think of expansion and in terms or, or territory in the terms of boundary, he's saying, God, I want you to take me beyond the current limitations and boundaries that I have. I want you to increase my capacity. If you look at it in leadership terms, I want you to increase my influence. I want you to take me from where I am and I want you to enlarge that and expand that beyond the borders that are currently there. Uh, expansion, you could say, is the constant expansion of possibility. I like this, 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 this thought in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. God, you are able to do exceedingly above all that we can ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. You can't even begin to wrap your mind around the things that God wants to do in you and through you. Your mind can't conceive it because it's beyond the realm of the limitations of your thinking. God can do above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. Ooh, God, enlarge my territory. You know what I like about this? This is the boldness of Jabez. The boldness that he has in this moment because he did not limit his prayers to the limitations of his beginnings. You wouldn't think with a guy that had a start that he had would be praying things like this. God, enlarge my territory. He did not limit his prayers to the limitations of his beginnings. And I like this one even more. And this is a statement. Our request should reflect the greatness of God, not the smallness of our expectations. I think sometimes, lean in here. I think sometimes we expect God to do too little. I think sometimes God longs to do more, but we ask for something so small. What if? We were to ask big, I wonder what God would do. I wonder if God would answer that kind of prayer. Enlarge 
my territory. Could he do it in 2020? Could he do it in the most difficult season of your life? Could he enlarge your territory? Let's look at the next angle of this two-sided coin here to recover. Because when you see the omission of a father and a grandfather, most likely that means that there was no land as a given inheritance. Because their names were not on there, that means they probably had no land to start with. In other words, they lost the inheritance to pass on to the next generation. So in some ways, when he's saying enlarge my territory, he could have been praying this, God, give me back what I've lost. Enlarge my territory. God, I don't have nothing right now. I need you to give back what's due to mine and that's due to me. You know, I think sometimes we can do that in the scriptures. There are promises that Jesus in Christ says he will do for us. I think we can legitimately come before the Father and pray things like that. God, you said this. And I need you to, it's, it's do me because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. I need my inheritance. God, I need healing. I need your peace. I need your joy. I need you to give me these things. Would you enlarge my territory? Ooh, I could camp out there. Come on. Give me an organ, man. I could go all day. Let's move to the next one. You ready? Enlarge my territory. And then he says, Lord, would you let your hand be with me? Now, this is a smart smart part of the prayer. Let your hand be with me. Anytime you see hand, the hand of God, think two things, power and presence. God, your hand was with me. Your presence was with me. God, your power was with me. Your hand was with me. In essence, he's saying, he, he's saying in this, and I think this is a wise prayer. God, I don't want the blessing and not have you. If, if, if I get the blessing and it leaves you out, I want nothing to do with it. Did you know, maybe you've never thought about this, but that every, every blessing has embedded in it the opportunity for a curse. Every blessing, it comes with the opportunity uh, embedded in it with a curse. What do you mean with that? Here's what I mean. What I mean is, is that you can get so comfortable with the blessing that you ultimately leave out the blesser. I mean, I've seen this. You finally get uh, the person that you want to marry. You believe God, you've prayed God for it for years, and you finally are now married. And now, for whatever reason, you have no time to serve or to be a part of a local church. You got the blessing, but now you're leaving out the blesser. Or how about this? You've prayed, you've saved, and you've got the home, that the dream house. You have it, but now you lack the ability to make it into a home. Or maybe you got the job, the bank account's full, but now you have no peace and joy. It's easy to get the blessings and to leave out the blesser. I love in Scripture, every time I hear something like this, I think of one person, Moses. I mean... Dude, he's used by God. The 10 plagues come upon uh, Egypt. He delivers the Israelites. They're going through the Red Sea. It's, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's all of these incredible acts of God on his behalf, only to find himself, the people rebelling. He's in a tent praying to God, and God says, listen, Moses, you take the people. I'll send an angel. I'll send one of my seconds that you take them. You live in that promised land, but I'm staying here. I ain't going with you. And Moses said this, God, if you don't go with me, I'm not leaving this place because I don't want to live in the promised land and not have you in it. I'd rather live in the desert and have you than all the amenities of the promised land. Woo, come on, don't send me unless you're going to go with me, Lord. I don't want to lose. Here's what Jabez is saying. God, I want you to bless me, but I want your hand to be with me. I don't want to lose my dependency upon you. Then he says this, would you keep me from evil and would you keep me from causing future harm? And here's the truth, guys. And this is true, is that the more that God blesses you, the more the enemy begins to notice you. The more that God blesses and does things in you and through you and has kingdom impact, you become a 
target of the enemy. The enemy will begin to harass you in big ways and small ways, try to disrupt your life and cause you to be distracted. The enemy will be at work. And let me just say this. If you're sensing that the enemy is really attacking you, in fact, you may know that the enemy is really attacking you, then, then that should be indicative of you that God is doing or is about to do something big on your behalf. But his prayer here is for God to defend him. And that's a good prayer. And in fact, he's saying, God, I want you to put a restraining order on the devil. I'm, I'm smart enough to know that if you start enlarging my territory and start blessing me indeed, and your hand is with me, that I'm going to be a target for the enemy. Would you put a restraining order? Would you defend me from the enemy coming in and intruding on your work in my life and disrupting your purposes for me? <laughs> and then he says, would you keep me? from causing future harm. I like that part. In other words, I can just see him saying here, Lord, would you, I've come from pain and it would be so easy for me to inflict pain upon others. God, would you save me from myself? Would you save me from my self-sabotaging tendencies? Would you uproot the seeds of rebellion in my heart that later on will grow and bear fruit? and ultimately could disrupt your purposes for me. I love what the famous writer John Owen once said. He says, don't get too prideful because the seeds of every sin are lurking in your heart. That's a good thought to think about right there. Keep me from evil and keep me from all future harm to others. And here's the beautiful part. Here's the best part of the whole text is that God granted his request. This is a beautiful picture in the Old Testament of grace because God didn't have to do it. I mean, if you think about the, this is pain calling upon God. This is pain, Jabez, pain calling upon God and God answers. God didn't have to answer, but he did answer. He gave something to Jabez that he didn't deserve. And here is the beauty of what I love is he never changes his name. He doesn't change Jabez's name, but what he does is because he prays, he moves pain into the background and he moves his honor, his favor, and his grace to the forefront of his life. And we remember Jabez for chapter 10 or verse 10, not verse nine. He started in pain, but he ended with the blessing of God. Whew, man, isn't that a beautiful picture? Let's begin to pray this as individuals, as families, as a church. Who knows what God's going to do and between now and the end of the year and in 2021. Lord, would you bless me? Bless me indeed. Would you enlarge my territory? Would you let your hand be with me? And would you keep me from evil and causing future harm? What I'd like to do now is, I know this is speaking to us on so many levels, but I always wanna be clear at the end here. I always wanna make a strong appeal. I never know who's watching or where you're from and you may be joining us. You may not even be a Christian. You may be an atheist. You may be a Muslim. You may be a Hindu. You may be far from the Lord. You may be just studying the claims of Jesus Christ and, and who he is. But if you've come to the realization that Jesus is the son of God and ultimately that he is Lord, there's only one thing you have that only you can give him that he wants, and that's your heart. It's a prayer of surrender, surrendering to the Lordship of Jesus Christ that he is the son of God and he alone as the only one who has authority to save you and to cleanse you and to forgive you. If that's you and you need to cross that faith or maybe you've left your relationship with God or even drifted largely in COVID, man, you, you just drifted from the Lord. Listen, just repent, turn around and start taking steps towards the Lord. Whether you're far away, whether you're just drifting in your heart, listen, let's just pray a prayer of invitation, inviting Jesus to become Lord in our life and surrendering to his leadership and saying, Jesus, save me and cleanse you. If that's you, while we close in prayer, you can do that right where you're at, even now, inviting Jesus to be Lord of your life. And then I want us as we close in the next few moments here, all of us 
to bow our heads, close our eyes, and let's pray through this if we can for the first time as a church. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. And again, if you're praying a prayer of invitation, inviting Jesus to, to your life, listen, you can do that right now. Just go ahead right now. There's no magic words. Just give your life to him. In faith, surrender your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And if you'll do that by the power of the Holy Spirit, he'll make it real. But let's go to the place of prayer. Let's create sacred space right now. And let's for the first time, let's do this. Ready? Here we go. Would you just pray, Lord, bless me indeed. Come on. Ask for the blessing of God to come upon you, to come upon your family, to come upon your place of employment. Ask for the supernatural favor of God to be injected into every area of your life. Bless me, Lord. Surprise me by what you do. Come on. Give prayer voice, not head and heart with your mouth. Pray. Now let's pray this one. Enlarge my territory. It's not wrong to pray this. God, would you expand my level of influence? Lord, would you increase my boundaries, my, increase my capacity? Lord, would you make me more than I already am? God, enlarge my territory. Help me to think bigger. Help me to have dreams, goals. What are you, what are you asking of me? What are the possibilities of the future? Help me to reconsider what really is possible. I love this. And, and when, this, when Jesus is come and an angel makes the announcement, he says, with a God, all things are possible. Maybe it's recovery. Maybe you feel like you lost something. And right now, for the first time by prayer, you're asking God to give it back. Maybe it won't be the same job, but it could be a better job. It could be a job. Maybe you feel like you've lost a relationship and you just need God to give it back and restore it. Come on, let's ask by faith. God, would you restore that? This is a good prayer to pray. Enlarge my territory. Here's another one. Come on. We're not in a hurry. Lord, let your hand be with me. I need your power. I need your presence. Come on, let's just let the Lord know that we don't want to do this without him, that we are dependent upon his hand. And let his power and his presence go with us. Nothing we have will ever be enough. Would you just ask the Lord to make his presence known, to put his hand upon you? Oh, what a beautiful prayer to pray. Let the hand of God come. And then lastly, Lord, would you keep me from evil? God, would you put a hedge of protection around me, around my family, around those that I love, around my church? Come on, God. Would you defend me? Would you, would you thwart and reject all of the plans that the enemy has for me? Let them not come to fruition. And let's pray the other part of that. God, would you save me from myself? Would you save me from myself? Rather than to be an instrument that causes pain to others, let me be an instrument that learns how to bless others. Lord, we thank you. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in every person's life here. And I'm just excited to see what you're going to do in individuals and families as we make this a prayer of priority. Lord, who knows? Who knows what you're going to do in the life and ministry of Stone Creek Church? But Lord, would you bless us? Would you enlarge our territory? Would you let your hand come upon us? Would you keep us from evil? And would you keep us from causing future harm? In Jesus' name, amen.